Welcome back to the second section on maneuvering in space. We've already learned why it's important to be able to track a spacecraft from liftoff to completion of the mission. And we know about basic orbits as well as the difference between geosynchronous and geostationary orbits. Today we're going to look at a fuel efficient way to transfer from one circular orbit to another circular orbit using a maneuver called the Hohmann transfer. In the last section, we talked about being in orbit and discussed different types of orbits for various space missions. Many missions require us to change the orbit. In a previous chapter, we discussed atmospheric drag and learned that drag takes energy out of our orbit, causing it to get smaller. As a result, we often need to counter the drag and increase the size of the orbit. In this lesson, we'll discuss simple orbit changes and how spacecraft move from one orbit to another using the Hohmann transfer. Here we see the space shuttle in rendezvous with the Hubble Space Telescope. We'll use the concepts in this section to plan a rendezvous. Let's begin by asking, why does a spacecraft have to go from one orbit into another? We'll talk about several reasons shortly, but first, let's consider how we have to change our own. For example, we may be on the main highway in town and have to turn onto another road to get where we'd like to go. It's the same in space. We may be in an orbit that doesn't get us where we want to go, so we have to change. In the photograph, both spacecraft, the Gemini 6 command module and the Gemini 7 command module, had to adjust their orbits in order to rendezvous successfully. Okay, let's get down to the basics. A few steps are necessary to move from one orbit to another and maneuvering in space consumes fuel. About 90% of the weight of the space shuttle sitting on the launch pad is fuel, called propellant. In general, changing a spacecraft's orbit, either its size, shape, or inclination, involves firing an engine or rocket to change the size or direction of the spacecraft's velocity. These firings have to occur at the right time fire in the right direction, and produce the right amount of velocity change to create the correct new orbit. First, we'll review some background information, and then we'll do an example so we can fully understand the Hohmann transfer. In 1925, a German engineer, Walter Hohmann, thought of a fuel-efficient way to transfer a spacecraft between orbits. It turns out that Hohmann's understanding of orbit dynamics was correct, even though there were no satellites or interplanetary spaceflight at the time. Hohmann recognized that decreasing the amount of fuel the spacecraft had to carry would be an important consideration, and he studied a variety of orbits until he found the method now called the Hohmann transfer. The majority of spacecraft placed in orbit use Hohmann's method because it saves propellant. All right, let's go to our example. Imagine you're in a car speeding around a racetrack. The effort needed to exit the track depends on the off-ramp's location and orientation. If the off-ramp is tangent to the track, exiting is easy. Just keep the steering wheel straight, move off the track. But if the off-ramp is perpendicular to the track, you are going to have to slow the car down and maybe even stop and turn in order to get off the track. So, if the off-ramp is tangent to the track, you may only need to adjust your speed. But if the off-ramp is perpendicular to the track, you'll need to slow the car significantly, alter the car's direction, and probably speed up again. Here's the figure we've been talking about. Again, notice that with the tangential exit, a driver must change only the speed by just hitting the brakes or accelerating. With the perpendicular exit, a driver must change the speed and direction. This is hard to do at high speed without rolling the car. Hohmann used this concept to create the most fuel-efficient way to increase or decrease the size of an orbit. The Hohmann transfer applies this simple racetrack example to orbits. By using on and off ramps tangent to the initial and final orbits, operators can change the orbit while using as little energy as possible. Increasing or decreasing the spacecraft's velocity by firing rocket engines changes the energy in its orbit. Velocity changes must be tangent to the initial and final orbits. Remember that velocity has magnitude or speed and direction. To change velocity tangentially, we must fire the spacecraft's rocket parallel to the direction of travel, which means pointing the rocket behind you 
in order to increase velocity. You should point the rocket in front of you against the direction of travel to slow down. Let's look at a few examples. So, how does a home and transfer work? How does a spacecraft get from here to there? In the last section, we saw many low Earth orbits. Well, the here in this diagram is in low Earth orbit. The there is a geostationary orbit. It works by adding or subtracting velocity or changing the orbit's energy. Remember, the energy of a spacecraft in orbit depends only on the spacecraft's distance or orbit size from the center of the Earth. Increasing velocity by adding energy to the orbit will move a spacecraft to a higher orbit. Decreasing velocity by taking energy away from the orbit will move a spacecraft to a lower orbit. Well, now we know how to maneuver a spacecraft. Later, we'll be able to do some serious traveling throughout the solar system because we know how to do Hohmann transfers. As a practical example, imagine a communication satellite in a low Earth circular orbit that needs to go into a larger circular orbit so it can serve more customers. Now let's try to understand a few of the details of a Hohmann transfer. Pay special attention to the slide so you can follow the orbits we are about to describe. Imagine your spacecraft is in the smaller low Earth orbit, that is a distance of our orbit 1 from the center of Earth. At some point, you decide that the spacecraft needs to be in a larger orbit, our orbit 2. The orbit connecting where we are and where we want to go is called a transfer orbit. In fact, it's called Hohmann's transfer orbit. Now let's get to the basic concept. You know how some days you have lots of energy and are able to do all kinds of things. And on other days, you have no energy and lay around at home. Well, orbits have energy too. In fact, the bigger the orbit, the more energy they have in them. So, in this diagram, we have three orbits. A small circular orbit, a larger elliptical transfer orbit, and a very large circular orbit. To get from a smaller orbit to a larger orbit, what do we need to do? You're right. Add energy. And in the case of a Hohmann transfer, we add velocity or kinetic energy. At this point, we can tie some ideas together. A Hohmann transfer begins at the point on the diagram where the smaller circular orbit is tangent to the transfer orbit. If we add velocity at this point, the spacecraft moves into the bigger elliptical transfer orbit. If we did nothing at this point, the spacecraft on the transfer orbit would stay in a complete elliptical orbit and not enter the large circular orbit. So we need to wait until something happens. We wait until the spacecraft is at the point where the elliptical transfer orbit is tangent to the bigger circular orbit. If we fire our rockets here, we add enough energy to put the spacecraft into the bigger circular orbit. It takes two steps to complete this Hohmann transfer. Increasing the spacecraft's velocity will change the smaller circular orbit's energy enough to put the spacecraft into the larger elliptical transfer orbit and increasing the spacecraft's velocity again will put the spacecraft in the larger circular orbit. Right now, we're just going to talk about velocity, which is referred to as kinetic energy. If you're driving down the road at 35 miles per hour and the speed limit is increased to 55 miles per hour, you step on the accelerator. That means you add energy and change your car's velocity from 35 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour. In space terminology, we call this a change in velocity, or delta V. If we subtract the velocity we have from the velocity we want to have, we can estimate our required change in velocity, or delta V. Let's use this concept. Here we've got the two steps of a Hohmann transfer. Pay attention as you follow the slide. In the left figure, step one, there are three arrows shown vertically with two of them stacked up on the left. V orbit 1 is the velocity the spacecraft has in the small circular orbit. V transfer at orbit 1 is the velocity the spacecraft would need to be in the bigger elliptical transfer orbit. The change in velocity 1 is the velocity we need to add to put the spacecraft into the bigger elliptical transfer orbit. A rocket would provide this change in velocity. If we did nothing after the first rocket firing, the spacecraft would remain in the bigger elliptical orbit on the left.
Once the spacecraft gets out to the larger circular orbit, shown in the figure on the right, step two, increasing velocity a second time will increase the transfer orbit's energy enough to put the spacecraft into the larger circular orbit. Notice that we have three arrows pointing down in the figure on the right. V transfer at orbit two is the velocity that the spacecraft has when it reaches the point tangent to the large circular orbit we want to be in. V orbit two is the velocity we'd like to have. And change in velocity two is the velocity we need to add to put the spacecraft into the bigger circular orbit. To sum up, a Hohmann transfer is a minimum energy two rocket burn maneuver that can change the size of an orbit, making it bigger or smaller. Now, the question is, how are Hohmann transfers like belly buttons? You have a belly button, and it's either an innie or an outie. You don't need to tell us which. But a Hohmann transfer can be either an innie or outie. We can use the concept to do an outie, like the one shown in the diagram where we go from a small orbit out to a larger orbit. Or we can go from a large orbit into a smaller orbit. It's possible to use the Hohmann transfer to actually meet up with another spacecraft in orbit. Let's see how this is done. At the beginning of this section, we talked about the reasons for having spacecraft go from one orbit to another. Do you remember what the initial reason was? If you said to figure out how they change orbits, for example, in order to reach the moon, you'd be right. Orbit transfers can also be used to bring two spacecraft together at the same point at the same time, which is called a rendezvous. Let's use this figure to help us understand rendezvous. The quarterback would like to throw a pass to the receiver who is moving down the field. The quarterback must anticipate where the receiver will be and the time it takes for the football to get from the quarterback to the receiver. The quarterback must lead the receiver as he throws the ball, so the ball arrives at a point on the field at the same time the receiver gets there. Now, what does football have to do with space? In the figure on the right, you can see an interceptor in a small circular orbit that is hoping to rendezvous with a target vehicle in a larger circular orbit. Spacecraft operators use a similar approach to that used by the quarterback to put the interceptor on a Hohmann transfer so it arrives at a point in space at the same time as the interceptor. Two great examples of orbit rendezvous are missions to fix the Hubble telescope or to supply the International Space Station. Okay, look at the slide and answer the questions. You can divide up into groups and work together on the answers. Make sure everyone in your group understands the answers. You have seen what typical spacecraft ground tracks look like. You also know that spacecraft in orbit often need some kind of orbit maneuvering and the basic concepts behind the most common maneuver, the Hohmann transfer. Maneuvering in orbit is key to getting from here to there to everywhere. With orbital maneuvering close to home under control, the next chapter will take us out of Earth's neighborhood through interplanetary travel.